Digital transformation requires new ways of thinking about how to create value. The industrial economy was about shifting atoms, basically making physical products and moving them around. The goal was to turn out as many widgets as you possibly can, and the focus was on efficiency, effectiveness, and optimization. We're now in a world where information can be even more valuable than physical products. The information economy is about making bits, creating, finding, and sharing information and data. The new digital economy takes this to the next level, and it's about connecting atoms and bits. In this world, you have organizations like Airbnb, which is a hospitality company that doesn't own any hotel rooms, Uber, which is a transportation company that doesn't own any vehicles, and eBay, which is a retailer that doesn't own any inventory. There are some interesting implications here. To connect atoms and bits, you need to truly understand customer needs to figure out which connections will be valuable. Take Amazon, for example. Amazon may not make much profit on their shipping and retail assets, but they are making money on the information that is generated by their customers. Every time you shop on Amazon, you leave a massive data trail, and Amazon knows more and more about you. That data is extremely valuable because it gets you to buy more and more stuff on their platform, which then allows them to understand you and your needs and wants much better, which in turn allows them to surface products and services to you which have a high likelihood of you actually needing them at this moment in time. Simple example. When you buy the diapers for your newborn on Amazon, the company very quickly understands that you have a toddler at home. With that knowledge, they can now surface goods and services which are highly relevant to you for years to come. If you bought diapers in 2020, Amazon has a pretty good idea that your child will be doing their driving tests 16 years later. So what are these new ways of thinking that companies like Amazon and eBay and Airbnb and so many others have used to transition into the digital economy? There's no magic here. You've probably heard of all of them. Airbnb and Uber are very much the result of platform thinking. In simple terms, platforms are the street markets of yesteryear. You provide the place and tools for others to conduct their business and charge a fee for the privilege. You don't own any of the traded assets. You often don't get too involved in the transaction itself. All you do is create the environment which makes the exchange possible in the first place. Platform thinking is great and everybody wants to be a platform. But if every company becomes a platform, there's nothing to put on the platform. Someone needs to provide and build the assets which are on the platform. Think about this as you explore your customer needs. Your customer may not need a new platform, but they may need an innovative item that fills a gap on an existing platform. Another new way of thinking is Agile. Agile acknowledges complexity and wants inability to clearly and comprehensively communicate all requirements up front. Essentially, Agile acknowledges that we don't know anything when we start and that it's about iteratively learning along the way and doing so in the most efficient and effective way. The iterative learning inherent in Agile is one reason why software-driven challengers can fell even the most competent incumbents. Agile methods allow the challengers to iterate faster and develop a stronger understanding of the true customer need than the incumbent. In the words of Jeff Bezos, doing new things at a high speed that's the best defense against the future. That's Agile in a nutshell. Just be aware that there's a tendency to view Agile as being all about the very specific methodologies used in the software development world. But Agile is really about a much broader understanding of how the world works. Agile is about flexibility, innovation, collaboration, and a tight focus on creating value for the customer using rapid iteration cycles. Using a framework such as Scrum is just one very specific way to get there. You will also hear a lot about using big data. We live in a world where we generate vast amounts of data. Virtually everything we do as individuals or organizations is, or can be, tracked in some way. As part of our digital transformation journey, we need to learn how to capture and analyze that data to give us a deeper understanding of our customer needs and our success in addressing those needs. But be careful. Using big data is not about collecting every tiny bit of data. It's about figuring out which bits of data are meaningful and using those very small fragments to gain insight. 
With big data, less is often more. When I was at eBay in the early 2000s, we analyzed all our sales data and correlated it with weather data. We ended up being able to rather precisely predict what our turnover on the platform will be depending on how nice the weather was. People aren't much online when the sun is shining and the temperatures are pleasant. Digital transformation requires new ways of thinking about how to create value, including platform thinking, agile, and big data. And the ability to create these value drivers using the new digital tools in our toolboxes. So, how can you use this digital mindset to create value for your customers?